Leader, top shot, backing, very, very different. Everybody has this uh, idea of running leaders. And I'll tell you, I'm gonna eliminate right here on my bait casting setups. Do I ever run a leader? No, um, I never do on my bait casting. The only thing I use leaders for guys is spinning, spinning setups. Um, this is the sticks number two, it's the hybrid spin. It's the slightly beefier spinning rod from sticksfishing.com, stixfishing.com, and the finesse stick, the number one. This is the lighter setup, the ultra finesse, Ned Rig, uh, weightless wackies, things like that. My rod company, in case you didn't know that. Um, that's why I'm helping you out there. So I'm gonna show you guys a little example of why I'm getting ready to put on new leader. Look how short that leader is. That's probably not even a foot, okay? Do I want to run le a leader this short? No, typically I don't. Um, and I'll give you a good idea of how long of a leader I like to run. So when I am casting, let me reel this up just to get it in frame for you. On a spinning setup, I probably got, I don't know, a foot, maybe 15 inches, maybe six inches hanging from the tip of my rod. So when I put on a leader, I typically like it when I reel up my bait within about six inches to a foot of the end of my rod. I like my leader to actually be right here. And what that is, that's about a six foot six to seven foot. Typical spinning rod nowadays in bass fishing is about seven foot long. So if you do a six foot six, you're usually gonna end up with your braid here and your leader not right here. The reason why that is great and critical, if you have a short leader, it's caught in between your smaller inserts, your smaller guides here. And to start that cast, your, le uh, your leader knot, this is not about the uni, this is not about the FG, this is strictly leader talk. Could hit your guides, your inserts right here and slow it down and mess up your casting length. If you have that leader knot right here, it goes through the big one first, it creates momentum of your bait going out, and it kind of starts to find a happy medium. So when your leader knot is right there, it helps it come through the guides better, and it's also not getting caught in your spool, ever. I fished water numerous times, that's over 30 foot of visibility. Have I ever needed a longer leader than that visually so the fish will still bite it? No. A six foot leader is more than enough. The reason why I do about six foot six, yeah, you can even go up to seven foot if you want, but about six, six, seven foot is gonna be fine. Cut off seven foot a line, tie on that leader, trim it accordingly. You just want enough to where when you're gonna grab the cast, that knot is a few inches above your finger. Now what happens is occasionally you get broken off, you'll have to retie. And that's where you run into one of these situations with this little short leader getting way too short for my comfort. I will tell you what, uh, I'm good with a two foot leader, even in about 10 foot of visibility of water. It doesn't make that much of a difference, but I tell you what, if you stride tied straight braid to there in 10 foot of water, you're not even gonna get a third of the amount of bites. Uh, but it allows me to trim, 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 and still get that performance. The only problem is, like I said now, that knot is inside my guides and hitting and stuff. So I wanna get back to about that six foot six leader from there. Now, when do I use braid to fluorocarbon on a spinning rod? Always, I always do. Now, does that mean I always run a leader? No, not necessarily, um, but I always have braid. So let me clarify, backer, I fill about 50% of my reels with braid. And then the outside of it, the other 50%, the working line is my fluorocarbon. Now, do I ever get to that braided line? Hardly ever. Unless I hook a monstrous fish at the farthest cast I can possibly make and it's ripping line, rarely ever happens. What is the point of backer the backer is nice because you only have to use half the amount of fluorocarbon that you would on a spool let's say you get a filler spool that's going to feel uh fill two reels now now why would i use straight fluoro with backer so basically i'm never using the braid i'm only using the braid as backer spring shallow water uh 
windy days. The spring, the fish are typically shallow and the spring's typically windier. Now, why is throwing straight fluorocarbon that is my working line and only having braid as a backer? Well, braid tends to get wind knots a lot more and throwing my straight fluoro out there in the spring when fish are shallow, I'm typically not fishing deep and they're a little bit more aggressive. I don't need that super, super sensitivity. So spring and fall, I like backer. Um, yes, I have enough reels to where I can do that. Do you ever need to do that? No, you don't. I would say fill your spools about 95% of the way and use a leader if all you have is just a couple of reels that you're working with on a regular basis. You don't need to do that. If you're critical in a tournament guy or you need to catch fish at all costs, like me sometimes when I'm out filming, I got a camera crew with me, I need to make those minor details to get those extra bites. Yes, I can do that. So now that's backer with working line as fluorocarbon. Now let's talk about top shot. Top shot is about the length of a cast of leader. So that's about a 98% filled braid spool, not with the six foot six leader that I was telling you about, or six foot, give or take, right around there. You just want it above your finger. This is about a casting length. So you look at about how far you cast a spinning reel on average. Let's call it 65, 85 feet. So now I'm gonna put about a working length of leader off of the end right there. This is one of those critical times um, to where if you don't like breaking off or retying and retying lots of leaders and you still want the performance of braid, top shot is nice. So you're going to put on just short of your casting length. So this is kind of a harder estimate. So when people say top shot, this is a much more of an advanced thing to do. A lot of the guys do this in trolling, but in bass fishing, sometimes you'll use top shot, which is a much longer leader. The problem is when you use top shot, sometimes you're not gonna be, it's gonna be in that spool and it's gonna affect your casting. So I sometimes will use top shot in the winter time and summertime when I'm straight dropping vertically on fish. And the reason why is I don't like getting down to a short leader, okay? Top shot really messes with your casting unless you have a slightly heavier lure on. So if you're throwing a slightly heavier lure, you can use that distance length of your cast. If you're casting 80 feet, you're gonna want a 60 foot section of top shot. So when you cast it out there, you're only working with a small amount of braid out of the end of your rod and the majority of your line out there is fluorocarbon or mono whatever you want to use and that can affect that but the problem is when you use shorter leaders you do have to retie your leaders more often like that that's a nuisance i do need to go tie another leader on if i had top shot i probably wouldn't even consider this a problem heck at this point i probably still would have had 25 or 30 foot of my fluorocarbon line on there to tie and I'd be actually getting close to a normal leader. So something to think of, when do you use braid on a spinning reel? Always, okay? The advantages too of that is braid is lighter than fluorocarbon. So when your braid is at the center of your spool and your fluorocarbon's on the outside, you actually get higher revolution speed. So your rotations, your RPMs, when you cast, you're, you're going to cast actually farther if you have braid on the inside and fluorocarbon on the outside also braid is a much thinner diameter it's going to travel off the reel a heck of a lot faster at that point too so disadvantage to braid you get wind knots you set the hook you miss the fish and you bring your rod tip back down sometimes your line will physically tie knots where that happens more often is when you get below 30 pound braid this right here is 20 all right as you go below 20 if you get into the 15 you get into the tens you get in the eight pound diameter not strength the diameter as your diameter gets lighter you can cast farther but your odds of getting wind knots if you're not familiar with how to manage those perfectly goes up 
better casting distance, higher risk of wind knots. So I typically use myself on the number two, the hybrid spin, I typically use 30. I think that's 20. I'll tell you right now, yes, I probably put 20 on there because that's all I had in the boat at the time. But I typically use 30 pound braid, which is eight pound diameter to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. So my diameters match up. So when I tie that, I tie a uni to uni. Sometimes I'll do an FG if I have time before a trip. Um, and then with the finesse stick, that's where I do use 20 because that's six pound diameter fluorocarbon and I always rig six pound fluorocarbon on my finesse stick. So I'm matching up the diameters of the line, not the strength. I typically will not go below that diameter in braid because I just find that there's just so many wind knots. Yes, can I be able to cast farther for sure? If I'm only using fluorocarbon, if I'm using braid as a backer, I'm not gonna get wind knots. If I'm fishing shallow, if I'm fishing in a lot of wind, if I fish in a windy area, typically I'm gonna go all fluorocarbon and use the braid as a backer. But that's it guys, hopefully you got a better understanding. I know it's kind of a complicated subject, but hopefully that'll help fill you guys in and I gotta go retie some leaders. I'm Nick the Informative Fisherman. Follow me on all the popular social media channels. Thanks for watching.